So what happens when Optimus Prime from the Transformers movies transforms to get a big upgrade? This happens. So this is the new Nextigitron Prime Plus dashcam, the upgraded version of its previous variant, the Nextigitron Prime. And this camera is super awesome. So here are the top 10 things which you need to know about the Nextigitron Prime Plus, which will definitely blow you away. You're watching Travel Tech. Let's get started. Starting with the fact that this camera comes with two different variants, a dual channel variant and a triple channel variant. The dual channel variant currently is priced at 10999 but with additional SBI credit card discount of about 1100 rupees, the dual channel variant is coming at a price of 9899 rupees. The Amazon sale credit card discounts are still going on and won't be lasting for much longer time. So if you want to grab this dash cam with some discounts, this is the perfect time. Talking about the triple channel variant, the triple channel variant comes at a price of 13,499 but with the current discount you get an additional discount of 1,250 rupees from the SBI credit card bringing down the effective price to 12,200 rupees for the triple channel variant. Do note that this gets the Starvis IMX415, the previous gen Starvis flagship sensor which was present in the DDPi Z50 and the 70Mi 800S dash cam. The dual channel variant offers a native 4K resolution backed by the Starvis sensor and the triple channel variant gives you a quad HD resolution from the front and full HD resolution from the interior and the rear cameras. This dash cam is probably the only dash cam in India right now which gets a modular design. Yes, you can easily detach or reattach the interior camera at your own will. Even the windshield mount is magnetic and is easily detachable. I've never come across a modular design dash cam in India right now. And the next restaurant Prime Plus has started the trend of getting modular dash cams right here in India. This dash cam is super capacitor based and the interior cabin camera gets infrared lights for that proper infrared vision during dark night times. This dash cam also gets a 3.1 inch screen display wherein you can watch immediately all the recorded videos at your own will, at your own convenience. You don't have to connect your smartphone to the dash cam in order to view the recorded videos. Your emergency videos, your photos, your normal videos from all three cameras are at immediate access straight up on the screen. This dash cam, if you purchase the additional hardware kit, can give you parking monitoring support. It has a time-lapse monitoring support and collision detection support within its parking monitoring. So if you do buy the hardware kit, you get parking monitoring as well. This dash cam also gets support for 5 GHz Wi-Fi for faster data transfer, faster file transfer, and it also gets GPS. This dash cam is supported by the GuardiCam app and also gets a 256 GB card support that should be quite enough to cover the longest duration of your trips. Last but not the least, this dash cam also gets additional accessories such as CPL filter, OBD2 hardware kit and even the regular hardware kit. Now most other dash cams, most other brands do miss out on the accessories aspect but the next return Prime Plus already coming at a, such a low budget price is also offering you additional accessories which you can buy separately to enhance the experience of using this dash camera. So these are my top favorite features of the next return Prime Plus. If you are already convinced to buy this camera, go ahead, the link to purchase it is given in the description below. The discounts are not going to last long. If you want to buy it, you got to go ahead and buy it right now with the discount because if you miss out, you will have to pay the entire money without any discounts. That being said, before you watch the rest of this video, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now, smash that like button and also don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get notified each time I upload a new video. So this is the everything you need to know all in one video about the next restaurant Prime Plus. Grab a seat, grab some popcorn, sit back and watch the video. Let's get started. So here's the box pack of the next Digitron Prime Plus. So as you're seeing right now on the box, they have given a picture of the dash camera. They have specified that this is a 4K Ultra HD supporting dash cam. It also has a 3.18 inch screen, 5 GHz Wi-Fi, gets GPS, GuardiCam app and voice control. Nothing else on any other side of the box except the branding the Prime Plus written straight up. So let's quickly take a look at inside the box. Alright, so this is the Nextigitron Prime Plus dashcam. 
a brand new design from Nexus Tron, very premium, very polished. At the back you get a 3.1 inch screen, at the bottom you get some buttons to control the on-screen settings. You get a windshield mount which also doubles up as your GPS receiver and also you can detach the mount like this. So this is a detachable mount, you have got these pins right here. So it's easy to detach and reattach since this is a magnetic mount. So as you're seeing right now, it's pretty easy to do that. On the front you get this large lens module, which is currently covered up using a sticker tape. You get this speaker hole at front. At one side you get the Type-C port for attaching the interior camera. So let me just remove that and show you. So here is the Type-C port, this is probably where the interior camera plugs in. On the other side you get the micro SD card slot and the rear camera slot. On the main windshield mount you get the Type-C port for connecting to power. So this is a 12 volt car charger which gets a single USB port and also a LED indicator. And it has the branding of next restaurant on top of it. So this is the interior camera which plugs into the main camera unit using this type C port right here. So this modular design is kind of unseen in the Indian dash cam market and this is probably even the first time which I am seeing a modular design in a camera like this. So let's quickly open up this rubber plug and insert the modular camera unit. There you go. So this is the interior camera and this is how it attaches to the main camera unit and I think even this is magnetic, it actually plugged in so easily well so as you are seeing right now, you don't have to put in any kind of an effort, it just plugs in so easily. You can remove it and place it back anytime you want. So at front this is how it looks and at the back this is how it comes up. So it nearly covers up the entire length of the palm of my hand when you attach it with the interior camera module. Following this you get a main power cable with a type C port and a USB A connector. Then you have the rear camera unit which gets kind of a hexagonal pattern print on top of it with the lens module. So the lens module also has been changed and you get the regular type A to type B connector plugged at the rear camera end. You also get a mini USB connector which plugs in into the main camera unit. The rear camera module is rotatable 360 degrees and it gets a small windshield mount with a 3M sticker pre-attached. At the back of the camera you get the next digital branding as well. So within the packet you also get an additional 3M sticker for the rear camera. You also have an additional sticker for the front camera as well within the box. So in case if you want to replace the camera's position, you can replace it with this spare sticker. Following this you have the installation tool which has been kind of refined a bit compared to the older wiring tools which I used to see from next digital. Along with that you also get about 5 wiring clips which can help you install the wiring of the dash cam properly and conceal it inside. So basically you have 4 electrostatic stickers, I think these two are for the rear camera and the bigger ones are for the front camera. So each individual electrostatic sticker comes in its own separate plastic cover. Following that you have the user guide for the Prime Plus, so you can also scan this QR code to watch the installation video if you're having difficulty in installing it. They have also given the QR code to install the GuardiCam app for both iOS and Android. They have given the Wi-Fi name and password. Also the additional accessories which you can purchase with the Prime Plus including the CPL filter, OBD2 parking kit, regular hardware kit and the memory card. Now next to Stone are making their own memory cards so that will also be an additional factor. So the specifications of the camera have been given right here. You can take a look at this. You can pause the video and get into the detail of the specifications. So the important thing to note guys is that if you use only the front camera it will record a 84 k resolution or you can downgrade it to 2K or you can even get it down to 1080p. If you use it in a dual channel variant either the front and cabin or the front and rear it can record 4K 1080p or 2K 1080p or dual 1080p resolution. If you use it in a 3 channel mode the 4K drops down to 2K from the front and Full HD for the interior and the rear camera or you can set all three cameras to record at 1080p resolution. So this clears out all the confusion regarding the 4K and the 2K resolution support of the front camera. It drops down to 2K only if you're using it in a three channel mode. In a single or a dual channel mode, it can record 4K resolution, native 4K resolution. So here's the complete product overview along with all the button controls and the different functions. So if you're someone who is doing this for the first time and you want to get into the detail of the dash cameras, technical aspects, you can dive in into this user guide. 
So these are all the things which you're going to get inside the Prime Plus Tashcam box. And this is the modular design for the Prime Plus, a detachable magnetic mount and a detachable magnetic interior camera. So this kind of a modular design has never been seen in the Indian dashcam market and Next Richton is the first one to bring this out in India. So let's move on and take a look at the video quality of the Prime Plus dashcam. So to start off with the installation, make sure you remove the sticker that's covering the front camera lens. Following that, insert a compatible memory card into the memory card slot of the front dash camera. Peel off the sticker from the windshield mount and even from the screen. Plug in the modular interior camera within its Type-C port and then stick the dash cam to the windshield at your required position at the preferred position. Make sure you press on the sticker so that the dash cam adheres perfectly well on the windshield so that there are no vibrations or any kind of a disturbance from the dash camera. Take the rear camera and also peel off the sticker that's covering the lens of the rear camera. Following that, peel the sticker that's covering the windshield mount and then stick the rear camera to your preferred point on the rear windshield. Make sure you keep the rear camera more or less at the center of the windshield to give out a more balanced view from both the sides. Insert the 12 volt car charger that's provided within the box into the 12 volt socket of your car. Once it's powered on, the socket will give out a blue LED indicator. Take the USB cable and insert the cable into the 12 volt charger. Take the rear camera cable and plug in the mini USB port into the socket within the front dash camera. Following that, take the Type-C cable and plug it in into the Type-C port of the front dash camera. This completes the installation of the Prime Plus dash cam. So moving on to take a look at the video quality of the Prime Plus. Here is the front camera video sample running in a triple channel mode. So basically this is giving out a Quad HD 1440p resolution at 24.82 frames per second. It gives out nearly 13,000 kbps of bitrate and 100 MB per minute of file size. And what can I say about the video quality? It is as good as it can get under the 10,000 price bracket. Since this camera gets a Starwis IMX415 sensor, the flagship sensor from Sony previously, the front camera video quality is simply flawless. The contrast, brightness, saturation and sharpness levels all look very much accurate. I mean, this is the kind of video quality which you usually get above the 10,000 price bracket. But in the Prime Plus, since they have included the previous flagship sensor from Sony, the video quality is pretty much as good as it can get and you won't find a better camera which can give out a better front camera quality under that price segment. Moving on to the nighttime video quality, again the same aspects are represented even in the night footage. You can also notice that the camera catches very less glare from street lights and even from the other car headlights. You cannot see any sort of a high glare or a whitewash look from other headlights all due to the Starvis Amex 415 sensor. The Quad HD resolution doing its job pretty well. The video looks crisp, sharp and neat. Even though it was shot during night time, the brightness in the video is quite good and sufficient to capture all the activities that are happening in front of the car. I mean, around the price bracket of 10,000 rupees, there is no other camera that can get you a better nighttime overall video quality. I'm quite happy and impressed with the front camera video quality in both daytime and night conditions. Moving on to the interior camera quality, this gives out a full HD resolution at 25 frames per second at about 7000 kbps of bitrate and a 60 MB per minute of file size. The field of view of the interior camera is good enough to capture both the driver side window and the passenger side window. And the good thing about the Prime Plus is that the interior camera is rotatable and adjustable. So you can tilt or turn the camera to your desired direction to get more footage from that particular side. The overall video quality looks slightly lesser on the contrast aspect. But the rest of the parameters of this video look decent and pretty much enough for a 10,000 price bracket triple channel dash cam. All the activities inside the cabin, behind the car, at the sides of the car are pretty much captured and you are completely covered from the cabin camera and the interior camera. Moving on to the nighttime footage from the cabin camera. So during nighttime, the interior camera shifts to infrared lights because the cabin gets dark and it cannot record in visible lights. So by turning on the infrared lights, you get a black and white footage of the cabin, covers the entire cabin, gives good brightness. You can see the driver primarily in focus. And even if there are some other people sitting in the car, they'll be completely in focus of the camera and the video footage won't be completely darked out. So around the price bracket of 10K, a decent and a very good infrared based interior camera footage. 
So moving on to the rear camera quality, looks slightly punched up on the saturation aspect. All the colors are popping up in the video. That's not a bad thing. Overall video quality looks decent. Again, similar to the interior camera, does seem slightly lesser on the contrast aspect. But as such, for the purpose of evidence, for the purpose of having the recording of activities behind the car, the rear camera quality is quite sufficient and quite enough. The field of view of the rear camera also looks good enough to cover most of the angle behind the car. I mean, you won't miss out any activity even when the car is pretty much close or even to the sides of the car. Along with being a tad bit higher on the saturation aspect, the overall video quality does look on the warmer side as well. And considering this is a 1080p resolution with a similar bitrate and a frame rate as the interior camera, but slightly maybe higher. Of course, you can also read number plates using the rear camera if the vehicles are pretty close, about a distance of 5 to 10 feet, and it shouldn't be a major problem. Moving on to the nighttime video quality from the rear camera, pretty similar experience to what you just saw in the daytime footage. No major complaints, no major concerns with this video quality. The rear camera is doing its job quite well, tad bit higher on the saturation as I previously. Of course, again, considering the same fact that this is a close to 10,000 price bracket triple channel dash cam, you cannot be expecting anything more from it. You cannot be expecting a top-notch 4K level performance. But for what it does, this is complete value for money and the rear camera is satisfactory and doing its job pretty well. So here showing you a video sample of the front camera in its native proof 4K resolution. So this was shot in a dual channel mode that's only front and the rear. And in this instance, the front camera gives out a 3840 into 2160 native 4K resolution at 25 frames per second, about 22,000 kbps of bitrate and 160 MB per minute of file size. The video quality is simply excellent, sharp, crisp, to the point, no nonsense video. The Starwiz IMX415 is doing its job as expected. And at the price bracket of 10 to 11,000 rupees, you won't find a better 4K resolution other than the next restore Prime Plus. The video sample being shown on the screen right now stands testimony to the kind of high quality video footage you're going to get with the Prime Plus if you do use it in a dual channel variant. So if you want to get the best possible 4K video quality around the price bracket of 10,000 rupees, the next restaurant Prime Plus should be your definite choice. So moving on to show you the comparison between all three cameras, these cameras combine together to form a sort of a 360 degree coverage around the car, covers almost every single aspect surrounding the car and you won't miss any kind of an activity, any kind of an incident that might happen in the front, rear or even at the sides of the car. The front camera quality does look beyond excellent since it's backed with a Starwiz Amex 415 sensor. The interior cabin camera and the rear camera look more or less pretty much the same. They both have a 1080p resolution and give out 25 frames per second. And the quality is quite usable, quite sufficient for a camera that comes around the price of 10,000 price bracket. Up until now, this kind of a coverage was not available around the price bracket of 13,000 and the next restaurant Prime Plus triple channel variant coming at such a low price point is definitely a value for money investment if you're looking for that complete coverage around the car. Moving on to show you the nighttime comparison between these three cameras as shown in the daytime example, the front camera is beyond excellent, gives you top notch 2K video quality backed by the Sony Starway sensor. The interior camera with the infrared lights provides good visibility inside the cabin. The rear camera on the other hand is performing as expected. Nothing too good, nothing too bad. Is just giving out a proper decent performance and you cannot really be expecting anything more from the rear camera. So all three cameras combining together to give you a complete coverage around the car is definitely worth considering for the price point this dash cam comes at. So moving on to show you the number plate reliability during night time, the car in front is about a distance of 20 to 30 feet away and if I zoom in to take a look, a pretty good read of the number plate, absolutely no noise, the image captured is smooth, the numbers and letters are clearly visible, there's no issue in reading number plates at such a far distance even during night time. Moving on to a closer look, so as you can see the car in front is about a distance of 10 feet or even less than that and even directly under the glare of my headlights and if we zoom in to take a look, all letters and numbers are clearly visible. The Starwiz IMX415 performing to its maximum capabilities, bringing out the best number plate readability even under close conditions, even under headlight glare conditions. Moving on to the daytime number plate readability, there are two vehicles in this snapshot, the white car in front and the two wheeler which is quite close to me. The white car is quite far away, more than 40 feet away I guess and if I try to take a look at the number plate, it gets mildly blurred due to magnification but each letter and number is still visible, still clearly readable. 
I mean, you cannot say that you can't read this number plate. You can make out the number plate even at such a high distance during daytime, during well-lit conditions, and that's a definite bonus that works in favor of the Prime Plus. If we try to zoom in on the number plate of the two-wheeler, wherein the number plate size is much smaller when you compare it with the car, a clear read of the number plate, all letters and numbers are clearly visible and you can easily make out this number plate. So this goes to show that the front camera performance has been fine-tuned to its maximum level and that it can read number plates of even two-wheelers when they are in a closer range. So this is the main screen of the Next Digitron Prime Plus. So as you're seeing right now, on the right side, you get the front camera view. On the left top, you get the interior camera view and on the left bottom, you get the rear camera view. So you have the power button here at first. So if I just click on that, you can turn off the screen at the click of a button. And if you want to turn it back on, you just need to press that button. So this is a convenient feature because at night, if you don't want the glare of the screen, you can turn it off easily. The second button, if you click on that, it will change the camera view. So as you're seeing right now, this is only showing the front camera view as of now. If I click on it back again, it switches to the rear camera view. And if I click on it back again, you have the interior camera view. And following that, you have a picture in picture, all three cameras being displayed together. Then you have the middle button, the OK button. Recording stopped. You can click on it to stop the recording from the dash cam. If you click on it back again, recording, started. recording gets started back again. The next button is a snapshot button. So in case whenever you're driving and you suddenly need to take a snapshot or take a picture of any activity happening around the car, you just need to press this snapshot button. You get an audio notification showing you that a snapshot has been taken and this gets stored in the memory card. The last button here, if you click on that, it will actually enter the menu, but before entering the menu, you need to stop the recording. recording stopped. So when you click on the OK button, the recording gets stopped and then you can enter the menu. So these are the menu options present within the dash cam. So first of all, let's head into the video settings. If you click on that, you have the first option, which is video resolution. And within that, you have two options, 2K for the front camera, 1080p for the cabin and the interior camera. If you come down, you can see that all three cameras can support full HD resolution. So this is in a triple channel mode, but if you switch the camera to a dual channel mode, you get a 4K resolution for the front camera. Moving back, you have the loop record option. If you head into that, you have loop recording of a minimum of one minute, up to two minutes and up to maximum of three minutes. Following that, you have the compression codec. It supports both H.264 and H.265 compression codecs. Then you have the WDR, that's wide dynamic range. You can enable or disable that. Following that, you have the audio recording. If you click on that, basically this is the mic option. You can enable or disable the mic. Then you have the light frequency. If you head into that, you get 50 Hertz and 60 Hertz option. You can select according to your convenience. So that's it, these are the options within the video settings. If you head back and move into the playback mode. So basically you can play back any recorded file from the front camera or the cabin camera and even the parking recording videos right here on the screen. So if I head into the normal folder and click on the front camera, so as you can see, it gives me a list of all the videos that have been recorded from the front camera. And if I click on OK on any one file, it plays through the file on the screen, showing me the recording right here on top. So whenever we need to play back the recording, we need to check something, you can immediately do that straight up on the screen. We don't even have to connect the smartphone to the dash cam. That's a very convenient thing. So heading back, you can also check back the cabin videos, your rear camera videos. Basically, you can check back anything on the screen and that's very, very convenient. Then you have the parking monitoring settings right here. So if you head into that, you can turn off the parking monitoring. You can select time lapse mode or you can select the collision detection mode. So this needs a specific hardware kit to be installed. This won't work without hard wiring. Following that, you have the voice control options. If you head into that, you have the specific voice control option, which you can enable or disable. If I head back and show you the voice commands, so you have these four basic voice commands right here. So you can control the picture settings. You can control the Wi-Fi. You can control the screen and you can even enable it to lock the video. So these four options are present within the voice control. So that's a really cool thing. Following that, you have the Wi-Fi options. If you head into that, you can select the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi or 2.4 gigahertz, or you can even completely turn it off. Heading back, you have the stamp option. If you open up that, you have the individual options which you can enable or disable to be displayed on the recorded video, such as the time, the GPS watermark, the speed stamp, the logo. 
So all these can be individually enabled or disabled and you can make them to show up on the screen or not show up on the recorded video. Then you have the micro SD card options wherein you can format the SD card, you have a format reminder and you can even check the status of the memory card. Then you have the GPS option if you head into that. So first of all you have the speed adjust option if you head into that currently it is set at zero if it matches the actual speed of the car. But if you feel the speed of the car is not being actually matched by the dash cam, you can try to set it by either reducing the speed by 2 km by 4 or 6 or even you can increase the speed shown by either 2 km or 4 km. So this is kind of a unique option which I have not seen in any other dash cam. Following that you have the speed unit option, you can select kilometers per hour or miles per hour. Then you have the satellite signal if you head into that. Here in it shows you the strength of the satellite signal for the GPS. So these are the options which in the GPS settings. If you head into the system settings, you have the ketone option. If you head into that, you can enable or disable the ketone. If you do enable it, you get this kind of a sound. I personally don't like this sound, so I'll just set it at off. Then you have the speaker volume. You can increase or decrease the volume or of course you can completely turn off the speaker as well. Then you have the screen saver mode option. You can set the screen to be always on which will basically show the video being recorded at all times. You can set screen saver on after one minute. So basically after one minute the display turns into a screen saver. You can also set the screen to automatically turn off after one minute. So let's just set our screen saver on after one minute. Then you have the fatigue driving reminder if you head into that. You can select it at two hours, three hours or four hours. Basically this will give you a reminder to take rest after that particular time has passed. Then you have the time zone in India, it's recommended to set it at GMT plus 530. Then you have the date and time settings, you can basically select the date and time. You have the G sensor option, if you head into that, you can set it at low, middle or high or even you can turn it off completely. Then you have auto off after stop. So this is basically the same option which we usually saw in 70 my dash cams and this will be applicable for all the cars which have a always on 12 volt socket such as Volkswagen and Skoda cars. So this will enable the dash cam to turn off after 10 minutes or 20 minutes when the car comes to a complete stop. Then you have the factory reset option to set the dash camera back to its original factory settings. Following that you have the about section wherein it gives you the QR code probably to download the app and also provides the model that is 5 plus along with the version number of it. So these are the options or the on screen settings for the next digital prime plus dash cam. So to connect the dash cam to your smartphone, head into the play store and search for Guardi cam app. You can even scan the QR code which has been provided within the dash camera box. So as you can see, this is the Guardi cam app right here. I've already installed it in my smartphone. So let's just open up that. So once you open up, click on the plus button on top, click on the next button, then go to connect Wi-Fi. So enable Wi-Fi and wait for the network to show up. So as you're seeing right now, it is showing up the network, the next digit on 5G. Click on that and enter the password 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 0. Click on the connect button. So once the smartphone connects to the Wi-Fi network, head back to the app. Wi-Fi It will give you an audio notification saying that the Wi-Fi has connected and the dash cam will connect to the smartphone. All right, so here's the connection and you're getting a live view from the dash camera on your smartphone. On the left, you have the mic button, you have the flip camera button. You even get a GPS signal shown right here on the screen along with this live speedometer. You can even select the map view in order to view the exact location of your car in relation to the Google Maps. So basically, you can even switch the camera modes just by clicking on the smartphone screen. So currently, it's switched back to the rear camera. If I click on the flip camera button right again, it switched back to the cabin camera. Then clicking it back moves it to the front camera. So now as you can see, even the GPS signal has improved. It's currently showing up in a green bar. So let's head into the settings of the camera. So first of all, you get the sound recording settings, basically the mic option. Then you have the video resolution 2K, 1080, 1080 and Full HD for all the three. So this is in triple channel variant. If you get a dual channel variant, you get a 4K resolution. So you have the speaker volume option, then you get the loop recording duration, then you have video encoding format, light source frequency, basically the same options which I just showed you in the on-screen settings, you get to control all of that even in the Guardicam app for Prime Plus. So if I just disconnect the interior of the cabin camera, 
So I just disconnected the camera and if I head into the settings, the dash cam restarts immediately and uh, if we head into the settings back up again, it's connected to the dash cam. So now the camera is actually in a dual channel mode. So if we head into the settings in a dual channel mode and open up the video resolution. So as you can see now you get three options 4K 1080, 2K 1080 and 1080 1080. So basically in this scenario you get front 4K resolution, native 4K resolution in the dual channel mode. So currently this is recording only in a front and the rear camera. So in the dual channel mode you get a front 4K resolution, native 4K resolution and in the triple channel mode you get a 2K quad HD resolution. So these are the similar or basically the same settings which we just saw in the on screen settings and you can alter them or change them based on your convenience right up on the screen or even in the smartphone app. So one more small feature but a very useful feature which I want to show you guys is that the interior camera is rotatable which means basically you can lift it up, pull it down, turn it towards the left, turn it towards the right. So this is very nifty and very useful because you can focus on the area where you want the camera to record the videos. For example, if you want to record the driver side and the main window covering the driver side, you can just turn the camera. So as you're seeing right now, the entire portion of the driver side window is being shown on the screen. Basically, it's getting recorded and even the driver is getting recorded. But if you want the camera to record towards the passenger side, so you can turn the camera towards the passenger side. So as you're seeing right now, the passenger side window is being recorded more. But if you want a balanced view of both the sides, you can set the camera to the middle and the camera will record more or less a balanced view of both the driver side window and the passenger side window. So many of the other interior cameras which are seen usually have a very static camera and you cannot actually move about to adjust the camera view. But in terms of the next on Prime Plus, this is adjustable and that's a very super cool and a convenient feature. Whew, so that was a super exhaustive, super detailed review video of the next restaurant Prime Plus. I'm pretty sure I've covered every single aspect of this dash cam. But in case if you still have any queries, you can always write that down. I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And if you do want to purchase this dash cam, the link to purchase it is given in the description below. Currently, there are discounts going on. So don't miss the discounted price because if you miss it by a day or two, you're going to have to shell out some more money. So go ahead, grab the dash cam right now if you want to get it with some super cool 1000 plus rupee discounts. The purchase links are given in the description. And if you did like this video and you understand the effort that went into making this video, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. Smash that like button. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get notified each time I upload such amazing videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.